I'm Bob Davidson, co-founder of the Davidson Institute, a nonprofit organization dedicated to recognizing, nurturing, and supporting profoundly intelligent young people. I would like to welcome all of you to the third annual Davidson Fellows Awards Ceremony and Reception. Here in the largest library in history of the world, where accomplishments of countless civilizations are stored, revered, and learned from, we come to celebrate those who choose to create, to celebrate those who choose to add to the knowledge and wisdom of our world, and to celebrate those who come to shape and guide our future. Again, I'd like to thank all of you for being here tonight to celebrate the 2003 Davidson Fellow recipients and help us recognize the extraordinary achievements of these exceptional young people. We have two very important co-sponsors of tonight's reception, and I would like to mention them. Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa, who has been a champion of gifted education for many years, and Senator Harry Reid from our home state of Nevada. Uh, these senators are usually here, but um, they can't control what goes on on the Senate floor, and they are each involved in votes tonight that are important to them, and they send their regrets. I'd also like to acknowledge several individuals who are fortunate enough to have with us tonight. First of all, our 2002 Davidson Fellow Laureate, Jason Chu. Jason, where are you? Right, raise your hand. <laughs> Dr. Julian Stanley, founder of the Center for Talented Youth at Johns Hopkins University, and somebody who in whose footsteps we are following. Some important friends from my great state of Nevada, the president of the University of Nevada, Dr. John Lilly and his wife, Geraldine. And one of our fellow Nevadans that we're loaning just temporarily to Washington, who has become now the public printer of the United States, Bruce James, and his wife also. And last but not least, and I get a plug here, I guess, uh, our associate Laura Vanderkam, freelance writer extraordinaire who collaborated with Jen and I on our upcoming book entitled Genius Denied, which will be published by Simon & Schuster in April. Laura? Uh, we'd also like to recognize several of the individuals who are unable to attend this evening and whom their congratulations to our Davidson Fellows. Um, Mr. John Danielson, Secretary Ron Page, Chief of Staff, uh, Ms. Pat O'Connell Ross, Team Leader for the Javits Program, Ms. Peggy Cooper K. Fritz, President of the D.C. Board of Education, and Dr. Paul Vance, Superintendent of the D.C. Board of Education. At this time, I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Susan Squafani, who is counselor to the U.S. Secretary of Education, Rodney Page. Dr. Squafani, who is also wishes to say a few words in recognition of the 15 Davidson Fellows here with us this evening. Dr. Squafani. Thank you. On behalf of Rod Page, I would like to bring my congratulations to the young people, but also to the Davidsons for having created a program that recognizes young people with the talent that these scholars have, but also the Young Scholars Program that will give young people an opportunity to see that they are valued for their extraordinary gifts and that they're encouraged to develop those gifts to their very fullest. We in this country, when we say no child left behind, mean children who are gifted as well as children who have not had all of the advantages in their educational past. And we believe very strongly as we move forward with the Mathematics and Science Initiative that we have got to find science. Great gratitude to the Davidsons for having created this program and we look forward to working with them perhaps on 
ensuring that young people across America have mentors who can help them develop to their very fullest. Many of you know that President Bush has asked Congress to fund a program for mentors because we know that so many young people need that positive adult role model, and in this case, a positive adult role model with expertise in those areas that our young people are so talented in. So again, congratulations to each of you, and thank you to the Davidsons for having created this program. Well, now for the main event of the evening, I'd like to ask Jan, my wife, and co-founder of the Davidson Institute to join me in presenting the 2003 Davidson Fellow Awards. Thank you, Bob. And thanks to uh, Dr. Scafo for those very nice remarks. Now for the, um, the, the Davidson Fellows Award was established over three years ago to recognize extraordinary achievements of young people and also to encourage them to bring the Davidson Fellows who are receiving the $10,000 scholarships. The first one is Julian Gingold. Gold. Julian Gingold, a talented... <laughs> Julian is a talented young man from Scarsdale, New York. He excels not only in his pursuits of scientific discovery, but he's an accomplished musician and he's a dedicated volunteer. Julian's work in computational chemistry led to the development of a new method of understanding proteins, function, structure, and motion. Julian's research findings have broad implications for public health and future pharmaceutical development. It has the potential to save the nation's healthcare system billions of dollars, so we're very interested in this project. Julian is a freshman at Harvard and hopes to become a researcher to help improve the Dutt drug development process. We are pleased to recognize Davidson Fellow, Julian Gingold. Our next recipient is Tim Lyhovetsky, who migrated from Moscow to San Francisco area and has been awarded the prestigious California Governor's Scholarship three times. Tonight he receives a Davidson Fellow for his project STEM Engine, in which he created multimedia software framework that allows for the rapid development of multimedia applications while significantly reducing the time and cost associated with computer simulations. Tim is a freshman at the University of California, Santa Barbara, where he's studying computer science. We are pleased to recognize Davidson Fellow, Tim Lyhovetsky. School in Irvine, California, has been an inventor since he was 10 years of age. Creating such things as a language to program robots over the internet and an electronic nose that can give the computer a sense of smell, just what the computer needs. <laughs> in his latest invention, Kirthi combined a knowledge of electronic engineering and computer programming to create an electronic brain allowing computerized devices to be controlled by thought. Thanks to his invention, the physical disabled will have enhanced an enhanced way of expressing themselves. We are very proud to recognize Kirthi 
Prabhupada. Our next fellow award is Arielle Tambini. Through her rigorous meta-analysis of scientific literature on organophosphate pesticides, Arielle Tambini established a link between the organophosphate pesticides and Gulf War syndrome. Arielle's discovery has brought the nation one step closer to understanding the mysterious illness that was suffered by thousands of our Gulf War veterans. Arielle is a freshman MIT, where she plays a, a, a wields a, a mean field hockey stick, I understand, <laughs> as well as pursuing her scientific studies. Combined with a signature style, Harold his eminence as a prominent contemporary American composer. Timothy is now a freshman at Yale University, where he's majoring in, of all things, music. <laughs> we are pleased to recognize Davidson Fellow Timothy Andrew. High School in Cumberland, Maryland. She used her knowledge of numerical modeling, analytical solutions, and experimental modeling to optimize the design of material stockpiles used in the mining industry. Chalet's approach produced a more efficient way for miners to locate conical stockpiles and determine draw points. Since the new age method, the, the new method that she created, no longer requires miners to operate machinery on top of the stockpiles, Chalet's work will also help minimize on-site safety risks. We are pleased to honor and recognize Davidson Fellow, Chalet Hong. Our next recipient is Anders Kaziorg. It's an extraordinary young man who has talent in the world of mathematics. In his project, Anders advanced the field of game theory by investigating a new class of the combinatorial games known as PSET games. While exploring PSET games, Anders discovered how to find the winning strategy in any sum of impartial PSET games. I've been worried a lot about that. <laughs> and, and applied his explanation to more general class of games. Anders has been homeschooled since the first grade. He taught himself high school math at the age of nine and has taken college level math courses at the University of Carolina since he was 10. We are pleased to recognize Davidson Fellow Anders Casior. at the Divine School of Music here in Washington, D.C., Halavi Mahidava has mesmerized audiences all over the world with her talents on the piano. Halavi ha has performed with the National Symphony Orchestra and the Chicago Symphony Orchestra in such world-renowned venues as the Kennedy Center and the Hollywood Bowl. Work provides a deeper characterization of the disease as well as clues for treatment and control of rheumatoid arthritis. An accomplished pianist, a gifted golfer, and a member of USA Today's 
All-American academic team, Irene has a promising future as a talented scientist, musician, and athlete. Irene is a freshman at Harvard and is considering a, profession, a, considering a profession in biotechnology. We are pleased to recognize Irene's son. Four of tonight's recipients will be recognized as Davidson Fellow laureates, a title accompanied by a $50,000 scholarship. Devon Guthrie first sang on a hometown stage at the age of six. Now she calls the nation her audience. Tonight, this young woman from Claremont, California is named a Davidson Fellow laureate in recognition of her portfolio entitled An American Quartet, Poet, Composer, singer and pianist, in which she performed songs based on the poetry of Emily Dickinson, Edna St. Vincent Millay, and Langston Hughes, set to music by American composers. Devon's unique approach to vocalizing classic American poetry speaks to the fundamental values of music and American culture. I believe Devon is a planning on attending Pepperdine University. We are pleased to recognize Davidson fellow laureate Devon Guthrie. By his passion for numbers and logic, this young man from Madison, Wisconsin, completed research that makes a significant advancement in additive numbers, number theory, and challenges the processes by which the internet security systems are developed and tested. His work has been published in two mathematical journals. Daniel also represented the United States at the International Mathematic, Mathematical Olympiad in both last year and this year, and this year he won a gold medal. We are pleased to recognize David. Um, first off, I'd like to thank the Davidson Institute for giving me this award. Uh, I'd also like to thank my parents who raised me from a very early age to enjoy learning, and especially mathematics. Um, I would like to thank Ken Ono, who was my mentor on this project. I would also like to thank the many professors from the University of Wisconsin-Madison who have helped to further my mathematics education. Thank you. A revolutionary treatment of HIV and AIDS may be just around the corner. Justin Liu of Sacramento, California has developed a new model that much more accurately predicts proteins in the body that are most apt to spread HIV. His innovative research will guide scientists to develop more effective treatments for HIV patients. Justin is now a freshman at Stanford University majoring in biology. We are pleased to recognize Davidson Fellow Laureate, Justin Liu. Um, what a pleasure and an honor it is to receive this award um, and to represent the Davidson Institute with its commendable cause of supporting the profoundly intelligent. I've personally felt very fortunate in my quest for learning, um, but I'd like to take a moment to thank the people who have guided me along the way, um, my family, who have always encouraged me to excel, 
all of my nominators who unfortunately could not be here this evening, um, but particularly Dr. Grace Rosenquist at the University of California, Davis, whose enthusiasm for science was always a great resource to depend on for me. And uh, naturally the Davidsons, without whom none of this would have been possible. Thank you. And our final Davidson Fellow Laureate is a young woman from Florida who conducted groundbreaking research in the treatment of infectious disease. Jamie Rubin's discoveries are likely to significantly advance, uh, it's likely to lead to significant advances in the treatment of millions of people with compromised immune systems, such as those with cancer, HIV, and AIDS. She tells us the primary obstacle during her research was the laboratory in which she worked was located four hours from her home in Fort Myers, Florida, making it a challenge to conduct the ex experiments that require daily monitoring. So this level of commitment, and her, her mother too drove her much of the time, so <laughs> on both Jamie's part and her mother's part is, is very admirable, so that Jamie could pursue her passion. Jamie is a freshman at Harvard studying biophysics. We are pleased to recognize Davidson Fellow Laureate, Jamie Rubin. my sincere gratitude for this award. The fact that I was named a Davidson Fellow is an incredible honor, and as a freshman at Harvard, I greatly appreciate the scholarship that accompanies this award. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank several individuals who are instrumental in my development as a scientist. My mentors, Dr. Dunn and Dr. Beyer, for their instruction and encouragement. My independent science research advisor, Dr. Glass, for always encouraging me to follow my dreams. Um, my family members for all of their support and my teachers for providing me with a source of knowledge. However, I think that the real honor in being named a Davidson Fellow is that I now belong to a group of extremely gifted individuals. The talent contained in this room is absolutely extraordinary and I feel genuinely privileged to have had the opportunity to meet all of you. Thank you for being such amazing people. Finally, and most importantly, I would like to thank the Davidson Institute for making this wonderful experience possible. It's truly an honor. Thank you. Are they great kids or what? <laughs> I'd like to, to say a word, some word to recognize and thank all the teachers that supported these kids. They went out of their way to help them achieve. And the mentors and the nominators we have had in the audience tonight and, and all the rest of them that weren't able to be here. And of course, as a parent myself, I know what sacrifices and challenges parenting very talented kids like these um, presents or opportunities these things, these children present. Um, thank you all for recognizing these outstanding young people. And I'd like to say a big thank you to uh, those who really made this special event possible. James Rice in Senator Grassley's office. James Fossum in Senator Reed's office. They were, they were both terrific helping us pull this off. And the team at Precision Media and the meetings and events and the team at Widmeyer Communications. We had a great group of people helping us do this. And of course, our own team at the Davidson Institute, Marika Pearl, Director of Programs and Services, Julie Dudley, the Davidson Fellows Event Manager, Colleen Harrison, Katie Graham, and Sheila Capurro. Thank you all very much for your commitment to helping us recognize and support our nation's brightest young people. Bob? Um. 
we are building the Davidson Institute on the belief that individuals who have extraordinary intelligence and talents, when encouraged and supported, can improve the quality of life for everyone. This is why we will continue to seek out and celebrate success stories like these Davidson Fellows. They have so much to offer when the nation has so much at stake. We appreciate all of you for sharing this evening with us and helping us celebrate the success of these 2003 Davidson Fellows. Good night. <laughs>